Well, this month, our focus uh, is on rejoicing in newness. And as I thought about newness and what that means, what I realized is in order to get the new, we have to let go of the old, usually, or we have to open to something different, to something that might be a change in our life. So how does it sound to rejoice in change? Does that sound exciting? <laughs> That's usually, at least for people who know me, that has been a major challenge in my life. Change, dealing with change, accepting new things and change has been, I think, my greatest struggle throughout my entire life. Um, I've been described as stubborn. I've been told I was bullheaded. I have been said to be one who only takes risks when they are so well calculated they're no longer a risk. <laughs> and more recently, I've been told that I have a ship that's very hard to turn around. You know how slow it is for a big ship to turn around out at sea? Now, some of you might say that these tendencies of mine are in the stars because I am a Taurus, for whatever that means to anyone here. And you might say that it's because of my childhood, because spontaneity was not something that we experienced much of in my family. My mother had a very set routine. And in high school, if I wanted to go out on a Friday night, there was a calendar on our refrigerator, and it had to be on the calendar at least a week in advance that I was planning to do something. So how many of you spent Friday night just hoping that phone call would come and somebody would ask you out on a date? Yeah, well, when that would happen in my family, I would have to probably, usually, unless I, I don't know, I often had to say no. And at least my experience was the guys in high school didn't plan a week in advance what they were going to do. <laughs> so for me to be able to go out on a Friday night was not very likely. Maybe that's why they set it up that way. I don't know. But spontaneity and doing something on the spur of the moment was not something that I experienced very often <laughs> as a child. So why is it then I chose, since I choose the topics, why is it that I'm standing here with this topic of rejoicing in newness? And I'm encouraging, not just saying let's celebrate it, but encouraging this idea of newness and change and the change that comes with newness or the change that's created by newness. Well, I'm standing here able to do this because I've done a lot of really intense inner changing over the years and a lot of intense inner work. And one of the things that I realized is that what I used to call a reasonable and responsible plan was often rooted in fear. All those, you know, I wanted itineraries for every place we were going to go, you know, all of this planning was really usually rooted in some kind of fear. The, the most obvious one was the fear of change and the fear of something new, something different, something that I wasn't used to. Stepping out of routine, like I said, my mother had an amazing routine, and I'm certainly hoping now that she's on the other side, she's learning a little bit about flexibility. But I can still tell you what she did every day of the week, what she did during that day, and what she ate on that day, because my mother lived by this kind of routine. And so when I left home and someone told me, well, you've got to learn to bend at the knees, I was like, what are you talking about? Isn't life like this? Isn't it in, in order? And you follow through with what you say you're going to do, and all of these things fall into place. So there's that fear of breaking out of a comfortable routine. For some people, that's the fear. And then there's the fear of what might others think. Not only what might they think of me if I do something out of the ordinary, but what would happen if I change my routine and that impacts somebody else's routine, and then that causes them to have thoughts about me? Now, so what would they think? And then there's the fear of the unknown. I think we saying something or said, so, oh, she read about the void and how the void has all of this wonderful stuff in it. Well, for me, when I think about the unknown, when the expected is no longer to be expected, when what I could predict, I can't predict anymore, it feels like this huge, vast, unpredictable void. And that's not a comfortable place for me at all. <laughs> and so I just sort of see this nothingness. And I don't know what to do with it at times. And then I think the ultimate 
The ultimate fear for me has been the loss of control. I've always wanted to be in control, to know what was going on, and definitely to be not only in control of my life, but yours if you come anywhere near my life. <laughs> and so releasing that and letting go of that and allowing people to have their own ideas has been a major, major challenge. So with all of these fears, all of these ideas of things that are challenging related to newness, how is it, like I said, that we can get to this place of saying today that we want to celebrate newness, celebrate change? Well, I have a quote from Helen Keller. She said, avoiding danger is no safer in the long run than outright exposure. Life is either a daring adventure or nothing. Helen Keller, life is either a daring adventure or nothing. And Cynthia James, the person that we read from earlier, she also says, there is no security in being stagnant. No security in being stagnant. So I've had to really look at change. And what does it bring into my life? What has it brought into my life? And how has it brought things that served me into my life? So I'm going to invite you to take a little journey with me right now. So if you can get comfortable. You can, and if you're comfortable closing your eyes or softening them, just go within and look within yourself. We're going to look at your personal timeline. And just take a moment to think about some personal major changes that have ex you've experienced in your life. And the first ones to consider are those changes that you would say happened to you, the ones that you didn't obviously choose. The ones that happened with no planning and no warning. Think about those changes. And now take a moment to consider where is the pearl? within those changes? Where is the kernel of good? How did that change contribute to who you are today or bring some good into your life? And if your answer is it didn't, keep digging, keep looking for that pearl. And now consider the major changes that you chose to make in your life. Maybe it's when you left home, started a new job. Maybe it was a trip that you chose to take. Maybe it was to consciously choose to have children in your life. Think about those changes that you could say you did to yourself you brought into your own life. And where is the pearl in those? Where is that kernel of good? How did those changes contribute to who you are today? And now consider any one-time chance meeting or discovery that happened in your life that changed the direction that you were going in almost instantaneously. Maybe you met someone. Maybe you fell in love. Maybe you saw something or heard a new idea, and it shifted the course that you were on to something different. Think about those changes that just happened by a chance meeting or an instantaneous discovery.
And now I have one question for you to consider from this place. What change is knocking on your door right now? What new idea, what new opportunity, what new thought? What's knocking on your door right now and how would it look if fear was not in the equation? What would you do? How would you be? What would be happening in your life right now? So everybody just take a nice deep breath and move into that place again, just a nice deep breath. And then allow yourselves to come back into this time and space. And if somebody in the back would check and make sure that our cooler is down to about 73. <laughs> so I encourage you to take some time this week to continue asking those questions, to continue looking at what change has already brought you in your life and what might occur if you were to answer the door to change that's knocking right now? What would happen in your life if there was no fear stopping you from whatever change it is or newness that wants to take place in your life right now? One of the first things I had to do when it came to looking at change was change my attitude about change. And the way I did that was by looking at what change had brought me, the jewels and the gems. And sometimes I will admit that pearl was within a tightly clamped oyster deep in there, and the outside kind of looked rough and raggedy, and I had to keep digging and digging and digging until I could get it to open and actually see that pearl. But one of the things I was determined to do w was to look back on my life and see the good in all of it, to find that pearl, to see that good in everything that has showed up in my life. And then I happened on this quote, which I'm sure you've probably heard before. If you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. If you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. And so that includes all of these things in your life. If you can look back at them and find that pearl, they happen to change just that much once we see that pearl and what has happened in our life. So that was the first thing that I started to do. Now, don't you think it's interesting that someone like me who had this major challenge with change in general and newness and the things that come about because of that, that I would find my way into a group of people whose founding phrase that we often say is change your thinking, change your life. What was I thinking? <laughs> How did I get here? How did I get attracted to a philosophy? And if change causes so much fear in people, how is anyone, how are any of you attracted to a philosophy that condenses itself into that sentence of change your thinking, change your life? Well, I think it's because many of us are starting to learn and see how it is we can actually rejoice in newness, how we can find the good that these things bring to us. So what is your first and initial response to change? When something new comes up, huh? You love it, good, he's already there. Good, we've got a couple that are already there. Are any of you kind of like, whoa, not so fast? Or, hey, wait for me, because it's like going and you're kind of trying to keep up. Or any of you are the kind that say, well, who authorized this anyway? <laughs> How did this come about? Or, mm, I think I'll just step over here and kind of watch this for a while before I decide if I'm gonna jump in with this new idea or this change. So then we do have those that are already going, yippee, yeehaw, let's go for it. That's the way they approach change. Well, I've mostly been the kind of, I think I'll stand here and watch this for a while before I join in with this one. And so I'm trying to move myself a little closer to that yeehaw idea and I'm sometimes there and I'm sometimes not, I will admit it. So I think it's interesting that Spirit has given me a partner now who can change on a dime. She can turn around, oh no, we can do something different. And so I think we're heading this way and all of a sudden this looks more exciting, let's go do this. Oh, and this looks more exciting, let's try that and here's a great thing to take a picture of that we will never see again. So we're gonna stop and take a picture of it. 
So spirit has brought this ability to change into my life, and I'm learning to go with the flow. Now, I've often lived by to-do lists. Anybody else like those to-do lists? <laughs> I've often had my little to-do list, and I work through the day and check, 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 check. So now, I still have my to-do list, but at the end of the day, I'll look at it and kind of go, well, we did that. Maybe two things get checked off. So now you know what I do? I check off my two things that are on the to-do list, and then I think, well, what all have we done today? What did we actually get to do? And I write them down, and I check them off. <laughs> so I still get to feel the pleasure of checking off something on my to-do list. What difference does it make if I put it on before I did it or after I did it? I'm still checking stuff off. And I'm learning how to just go with however the day unfolds, which is a new and really wonderful experience for me. And so that leads to sort of the second thing that I've had to do with change, is look at what it is I think is important about life. Is it checking all those things off the to-do list, or is it the experience and the journey that is what is most important? And not just the journey, but like I said, the experience. Is it that destination, or is it the whole process of getting there? And what I found is it's not just the journey, but it's how I choose to experience that journey. I can either go with major resistance and major grumpiness, or I can go with the flow. And I can either go kicking and screaming, or I can choose to stay in a joyous center and just have a wonderful experience. <clears throat> when I was going into the ninth grade, I had just joined a youth group at a church, and this was a new experience for me. I had made friends, and good friends, for the first time in my life, where I felt like I could interact with people. They weren't teasing me. They weren't picking on me. This isn't to make you feel sorry for me, but it really took that long in my life to get a group of friends that I was comfortable with. And so I'm enjoying this experience when my parents say, we're going to go to Europe for six weeks. My father was a scientist. He gave a paper at a conference, and we had the opportunity to get on a charter flight and go and join him and travel and camp around northern Europe for six weeks. Well, when they told, told me that, I was like, <laughs> no, 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 no. I do not want to do this. First of all, I knew that at the end of six weeks, none of these new friends would remember who I was, and they wouldn't want anything to do with me. I was just terrified that if I left, I would come back to nothing. I also wasn't too thrilled at the idea of six weeks with my parents and my brother in a camper in Northern Europe where I had no idea what to expect or what was going to be happening. So I tried everything. I kicked and I screamed and I cried and I said, can't grandma come and stay with me? And I had all these great ideas and they were like, no, you're going. This will be a good experience for you. So I get there and I moved into the second form of kicking and screaming, which is the silent one where I just stuck my face behind a book. And I kept reading and I kept reading as we're driving through England and moving up into Scotland. And finally my dad says, you know, we didn't bring you here so that you would read. We brought you here so you could see something different. Put your book down and look out the window. So the book went down and I started looking out the window. And eventually I started to get into what I was seeing, new things, getting to explore castles and eat a scone. I'd never had a scone before doing things that were different. And eventually, I met a young girl my own age in Scotland. The two of us exchanged addresses, and I spent 25 years in a friendship with this woman writing letters back and forth. And at some point, she told me that she felt like I had saved her life. And the reason she said that is because when I got back home, those friends of mine at the church had not forgotten me. I continued to interact with them, and my new friend, Eileen, in Scotland, started going through a physical ailment that caused her a lot of pain, and she really wasn't sure she wanted to live through it. It was very difficult for her. So I had all of my friends at the church praying for her and writing her letters, and she says it was those letters that helped her live through that experience and move to the place where she did eventually get married and have kids and do what people do. So just that was something that showed me that change and experiencing something new can have a real kernel to it, can have a real pearl, something special and precious. 
So I have to remind myself about those kinds of things when I'm up against that resistance to move into change. So I ask myself then, how can I stay centered in joy? How can I stay centered in a positive experience so I'm not just rebelling and reading a book through the whole process? And one of the things I try and do is cultivate curiosity, asking myself, OK, what next? Where are we going? What's going to happen next? And how can I make this fun? So that leads to the third aspect of how I've learned to deal with change, and that is to really pay attention to the inner monologue, sometimes dialogue, as I'm talking with myself about change. Because sometimes I have to really quiet the part of me that wants to judge the person for creating change in my life or the situation. I want to complain about new things, maybe the new food or whatever, the new situation. And I have to quiet that and really pay attention to what am I saying to myself? What am I saying? And so I start asking, these are some of those questions Cheryl didn't even know I was going to be bringing up. What is working for me in this moment? What am I going to gain here, or what am I gaining here? And how can I make this more fun and more satisfying for me? And one of the most important questions that I got from a practitioner at the Albuquerque Center when I was faced with a major challenge in my life in terms of my own physical being, she said, you are going to be the light in that situation. They're going to need your light more than you need their services, their medical services. So I asked myself now, how can I be the light in this situation? How can I bring more light into whatever it is, whether it's a challenging new adventure or a not so challenging one? For me, all new things can be challenging just because it's new. So how can I be a light in that situation? And sometimes, because I'm still not 100% good at this, <laughs> sometimes I really have to quiet that inner child who really, really, really loves predictability, loves stability, loves consistency and reliability, and I will admit, loves to get my own way. So sometimes I just have to say, you know, it's going to be OK. I have to remind myself, God is everywhere present. That means in the person or thing that's creating the change in my life and in me. It really is all good, and it is going to be all good. I just have to say that to myself over and over and over again. I have to remind myself that I value the adventure more than the to-do list. And I have to remind myself that spirit has my back. And sometimes I even now ask myself, do I want to make a change right now? Is there some way that I want to create a change in my own life? What do I want to do to see a change take place? And so that is what I've come to see, is that change can actually be a tool. It can be something that we use in our life. It helps to bring us to that deeper desire. It helps bring about that deeper desire. Whatever it is that we're wanting isn't going to happen unless we create change in some way. I've come to see that my inner longings aren't going to take place if I don't allow change to happen first. And it keeps me or leads me to my divine purpose. So I see now that change can be a tool, which I think is what we're talking about when we say change your thinking, change your life. It's using that as a tool. It's finding a way to help it to enhance your experiences. I have a friend who sent me a text the other day, and she said, have a human day filled with divine experiences. Have a human day filled with divine experiences. Well, what are divine experiences? They are those things that sort of happen. They are part of that evolutionary process. They are part of the newness that shows up, the good that shows up. And so right there, change is part of that divine experience that I am opening myself to have. So change is a tool, and it begins with our thinking and our attitude about change itself. And it moves through how it is we react to change. And then, hopefully, it moves into the ability to go with the flow, 
to just let change happen in our lives. And eventually, it becomes that tool that allows us to affect change, to bring about any necessary, wanted, or needed change. Now, to me, that is something worth rejoicing about. And so to quote Geneva, one of our emeritus practitioners, thank you, thank you, thank you, God. That's what she says to everything. Thank you, thank you, thank you, God. And so we learn to rejoice through being grateful, just to say thank you. We don't need to judge what showed up. We just say thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'll accept this. Thank you. Now I'll go in this direction. Thank you. Now I know better. Next time I'll make better choices. Thank you. What a blessing was hidden in there. Thank you. What an amazing view from this new road. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So this person, John Maxwell, is credited with saying, change is inevitable, growth is, you all know that, optional. Change is inevitable, growth is optional. And Mahatma Gandhi is credited with, be the change you want to see in the world. And so what I've come to see is that change is a tool that allows me to be that change that I want to see in the world. And change is inevitable. Growth is optional, and sometimes, I will add, growth is intentional. It's actually intentional. It's what we're choosing to do. I chose to change my relationship with change, and it's still, the ship is still slowly turning, but it's turned from where I started. So this month, as we focus on revo rejoicing in newness, rejoicing in the change that brings about newness, rejoicing in the changes that newness creates, I invite you to just contemplate how change has showed up in your life. What has it meant to you? What has your relationship been with change? Maybe journal about it, meditate on it, contemplate about it. And if you find a stuck place that you want to work with a practitioner or myself with, give us a call. We can help you maybe unravel that knot of resistance and be able to move to a place of rejoicing in the change that shows up in your world. And one of the things that I've learned as I've started to shift my relationship with change, is I get that what I call cosmic two by four less often. Now, in my mind, the cosmic two by four is like my parents saying, you will go and you will have fun <laughs> regardless. And it's, a, it's a difficult, usually it's a real smack, it's a real hard shift that I don't necessarily feel good about in the beginning, but eventually I'm like, oh, that's why that happened, okay. Now I get it. So that cosmic two by four tends to happen less when I listen to the knocking on the door earlier. When I look for a way to accept it in, to go with it, and to rejoice in it before I have to be kind of shoved a little harder in that direction of something new and some kind of change. Because we are always, always at choice. Change is inevitable. Our choice is whether we go about it with resistance or with rejoicing. And that growth is optional and sometimes can be intentional. So what change? Who me? <laughs> what about you? Let's take that within. Let's just go within. And so to repeat from the earlier reading, come to the edge, he said. They said, we are afraid. Come to the edge, he said. They came, he pushed them, and they flew. And so we just know that in this moment, whatever fears are keeping us from moving toward the edge or even taking that leap, that we can release them, knowing that as we scan our life, change has brought about amazing pearls has helped bring us to this place that we are today. And we know that no matter what happens, we learn to fly or there's a net. Spirit has our back. And so I just give thanks for this opportunity to spend time really reflecting on how it is that I have grown and moved in this experience of change in my life. And I just know that this is also an opportunity for each and every person to give thanks for whatever changes have occurred. 
and whatever change is moving right now in and through their life are beckoning for them to open the door. I dare to step to the edge of what I currently know. I leap into new dimensions of creativity. I know that I will fly, and so it is.